deeply. I was watching a uh, YouTube or a streamer vlog, something. But she got uh, the tiniest Pomeranian puppy. It was three weeks old or eight weeks old. I don't know. Those things are tiny. It was <laughs> tiny. Here you go. Bah, 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 bah. It was a little tiny little thing. Yeah. And then she was like teaching it to sit and it would sit and then she gave it a treat. I was like, oh, this is the cutest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't sounds like, like dogs. Sounds that like dog breakfast. Though. Oh, really? That dog, right? That dog's all right. with that song welcome to game rushmore welcome brandon crooned us welcome to mini tearing up the episode. carpet mm-hmm. uh yeah this is game rushmore the latest episode i am the host today mike and with me is hey josh and brandon oh and <laughs> that's really distracting all right there's a lot going on right now, guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Listening to us, there's a smoke alarm going off in the building next to ours. It's stupid. They can't hear that. I know, but it's driving me crazy. Mm. And the cat's running around. I live above it. I live above the noise <laughs> and confusion. Well. If I go to my closet, though, it's pretty loud in there. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's All right. the worst. I'm back. All right. Welcome. Welcome to Game Rushmore. Uh, so anyways, uh, not a whole lot new, uh, it's end of the year. So that means all the talk is game of the year. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to say that, uh, don't listen to any other publication or website or whatever. Mm-hmm. None of those game of the years matter. The only one that matters is game Rushmore's game of the year. That's the definitive game of the year well we spend the most money we carve the games into a mountain afterwards yeah, that's true yes we have ruined many a sacred mountain yes, <laughs> yes we have yep we have many fines for defacing public property yeah mm-hmm. uh but uh i guess before we start getting into some of the game of the year talk what have what have you been playing brandon your life has changed recently my life i've given up games yes I've been playing Xenoblade Chronicles X. Oh. I, I beat it. And I did some post-game epilogue stuff. Very happy with the game. I've it, Now it's part of the top-tier echelon of what I consider the best... One of the best games ever made, in my opinion. Up there with? Up there with... Um, well, it, it used to be Morrowind, so it's, it's surpassed Morrowind. But it's up there with Ni no Kuni, which is a PS4 game. Collaboration of Studio... PS3 game. Yeah. Oh, that's right. A PS3 game. Ni and no a, Kuni 2 a, is going to be a 3DS PS4 game. game. Huh? So the second one's going to be a PS4 game. Yeah. But that one doesn't have the collaboration, which I think made the first one so great. Do you think it's going to negatively affect that game in your opinion? I'll say negatively because level 5 is really good. And I love level 5. Yeah. Um, production and, and games mm. but I mean studio Ghibli <laughs> I always butcher this <laughs> careful, studio Ghibli careful consideration before finishing that name. Uh, that wonderful studio helped you can see it's charm it has a certain charm mm. and uh, you know obviously it's not going to be present in the second one but they didn't write the story or anything. That was all Factor 5. So that's fine. That, but I'm saying that's good, though. If they're not back, you'll still get a quality story if you like the first one. That, that is correct. That is correct. But some what what also made the first one so great were the characters, like just how they looked. Like Mr. Drippy. He was the doll that became alive with the, the lamp for a nose. With the uh, Welch accent. I Maybe. I don't remember. It was very thick. And... If he, he follows you and it, you can hear him ringing like a bell, 
And then if you ran around in a circle, he would he would kind of try to keep up with you, and then he would just get dizzy and then fall over. That's he, cute. He was a very delightful character. He had a very thick Welsh accent. He said, swear to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, where's the dead in here? <laughs> I, I've been playing um, just Xenoblade, really, trying to get rid of this game, which I cannot get rid of. <laughs> and so I can buy, which I already have. Keep flushing it down the toilet and it just keeps floating back up. Yeah. So I, I purchased Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and a Switch. What? Not in that order. Or in that order. Yep, in that and, order. Yeah, was that in that order? I The special edition Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is pretty cool. It has the soundtrack, which is good. It actually has the real CD soundtrack, whereas the Chronicles X had the, the a zip drive, which, you know, you would put in and... Thumb drive. Oh, I'm sorry. Thumb drive, zip yeah. Zip drives are very different things. When I worked at the... At my college's computing commons, we used to have zip drives, and they're just like giant floppy disks. Right, like the tiny floppy disks. Like big. They were just thick and uh, plastic, and it was terrible. Well, flash drive, USB thing, and it just wasn't practical. You couldn't take it in the car and listen to it. Yeah, you were saying that you couldn't even take them off the thumb drive. I don't think you can, unless there's some way you can do it. Um, And then... Let's see. The art book is what weighs so much in that package. Mm. In the because the Xenoblade Chronicles two very heavy. I'm just gonna start saying two, X two and Z Xenox, Xenox. What? What? That's Brandon's abbreviation for Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, instead of saying the whole thing. So Xenox. I'm sure there's a Japanese abbreviation. You just figure out what that is and use it. I don't think it's pronounceable. It's just initialism. Like ZXC, XCZ, XCX. (laughs) No Z in there. I don't know. So anyways, your video game. So Xenox has a good art book, USB drive for the soundtrack, and a little cool piece of art. Whereas the special edition Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has a real soundtrack CD, a metal case, which is very nice. And a very thick hardback art book. Does that have a sword? No. <laughs> no no sword. Mm. No no monado. Back out. I'm out. And you're out. <laughs> well, the everything is shrink wrapped too, which is pretty cool. So uh, that's how you tell it's Japanese. <laughs> well the other one didn't wasn't didn't shrink wrap stuff. No, when I was in Japan you used to buy like like you can buy like a giant king size uh Kit Kat here in America. Mm-hmm. And when you open that up it's a bunch of Kit Kats that are all stuck together. In Japan, they would be like little packages of different Kit Kats all together. No matter what, it was always like everything was individually wrapped inside. Mm. So there you go. Well, how many of those things did you eat already? Are we talking about Kit Kats? Or are we talking about <laughs> we're talking about your Central Blade Chronicles X there too? I didn't eat anything. Oh. No. It just it. So I'm gonna leave it. I've I've finally been able to take my Xenoblade, my Xenox art book and peruse it without spoiling anything because i played through the, the main story uh-huh that took you hundreds of hours to be able to read that two book. years <laughs> yeah yeah literally two years um so i just started to i only played a half hour and it was a half hour before this podcast because i've been pretty busy or i should say preoccupied and i like what i see i downloaded the japanese voice but i immediately changed it to back to english Oh. oh, so you, you actually booted up your Switch. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, my Switch is up. Because you bought it, and you came home, and you're like, oh, look at what I got. And then you immediately put it on a shelf and then start playing Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, let, let me take a moment to Very... talk about my purchasing experience. <laughs> I was going to ask so, you about this. <laughs> Toys R Us. It's going out of business. and Is I'm, it going out of business, or is it just fired, on the decline? Chapter 11 is... They filed it. So. Oh, filed bankruptcy. Oh, okay. Doesn't mean that they will go out of business. Just means that they're. Oh, okay. Too much debt. That they're poor. Yeah. Too much debt. Well, I'll tell you what they're doing wrong. One of the things they're doing wrong, and that is when I went to go buy a switch, they had little tickets, a ticket system, mm. and they had a bunch of tickets for the switch, multicolored blue, red, um, um, little Joy Cons. The and ugly then, one. And then oh, whatever, and then the gray Joy Cons. 
The better looking one. They had probably a dozen of each. So I said, wow, they've got a lot of switches. And I thought this is probably not right. But I grabbed <laughs> a colored one and it said, wait in line to purchase this. So I went to the cash register and I waited in line because, you know, Christmas season. And uh, it was Friday. Finally get to the register. They take it. Don't even scan the piece of paper. They just go to the supervisor. Hey, can you see if we have this? And then she, you know, pulls out her little radio and says, can you, do we have a, uh, you know, uh, this special switch? And they're like, oh, we, we're out of those. I'm like, well, that's funny because you had all those tickets. Yeah, why well, have a dozen tickets back there? And well, why make me wait in line just to be told you don't have it? And I knew they had the the, the gray one earlier that day because I did look up online just to make sure I didn't want to go for nothing. Yeah. So I said, I'll take the gray one if you got it. I said, well, let me see if we even have it. And then she found one. She gave it to me. And I purchased it. And I'm happy. So it was stuffed with tickets and they didn't even know if they had them in real. Yeah. They just have tickets of stuff that they technically don't have in stock. And the problem is there's no, there's no one working there to say, let me scan this for you to see if we have it. It's just wait in line to ask the register. And when so you, I have to wait in line as though I'm going to buy something, not knowing if I'm going to buy something. And when you did get up and asked, you got just a, uh, a big old shrug with no answers. Yeah. <laughs> as, as the supervisor went to go look for an available switch, I asked the, uh, the, the cash register person um, why, why they had multiple tickets out. I'm like, is there, you don't think... Well, what's the benefit of doing this? And she just looked at me and she shrugged, didn't even answer me. And I was trying to get to the bottom of like, is there a reason why detective Brandon, like, mm-hmm. has it just, have you guys not updated your, your account or you just, no one has bothered to say, you know what? Let me tear down this system that, you know, Jeffrey, the, um, giraffe mm-hmm. for Toys R Us. He was the mascot. Yeah. They strung him up like a pinata when they hit him and he, first open it was just full of tickets they put tickets. those in the thing yeah, tickets for candy wherever they land then yeah. that's that's what's in that's how inventory works at toys r us tickets said bring to the register for candy yeah. you, al- you also said that they turned toys r us into an ikea store where you had to navigate like half the store before you could get what you actually wanted and check out that i think I, I think toys r us has always been that way it's always been like a Oh really? Walk through that the store maze. kind of experience yeah because you, you start with the little maze to get in with all the discounted stuff and then you go through, and each section you have to kind of go in a circle around the store. Yeah, that's annoying. To that's find annoying out that when they you didn't have your multicolor controller. Think of it though: if you have like yeah. five children with you, and you have to walk with them oh. through an entire toy store to get mm-hmm. to the cash register. That's why children no, are thanks. a nightmare? Yeah, that's why you blindfold your children when you take them outside, <laughs> like a well, horse. Mm. I've grown up. I'm no longer a kid. No uh, Toys R Us kid. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now on my list of things that I do not recommend, GameStop. Ooh. Hot takes here. And Toys R Us. Toys R Us. Mm. Just two. Everywhere else, a <laughs> okay. Perfectly fine. That that place that was Game Days or whatever that was in Hollywood Video. Mm. I don't like that place either. That was Game Crazy. <laughs> game Crazy. <laughs> They they sold me a Final Fantasy Chronicles game that was scratched, <gasps> and it was supposed to be brand new, and and I I looked at it, I, so he he gave me the you know the store model the model they open and display yeah I'm like why don't you know do Toys R Us put a ticket out there you don't need to open up a yeah. game put a ticket out there so he this person gave me this game and said would you like to buy protection for this game. I'm like, this game you've already handled and opened, you want to charge me for protection? You should offer me free protection. <laughs> and I look at it, and there was a scratch and a thumbprint on it, on the disc. Did you I, pay a new price? I did pay a new price. Mm. It was the only copy they had. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I could have done. I worked at You should have said, I'm not buying this unless I'm getting a used discount. Well, yeah, I should have been more aggressive, but I, I wanted it. It was kind of like I bought it. I paid for it and they handed it to me and then I'm like looking it over. What game was it? Uh this was a Wii game, I believe, Final Fantasy Chronicles. Oh, Final Fantasy Chronicles. It, Crystal it, Bearers? Chris, no, not that one. It was the one that was very much like the handheld the GameCube one. Oh, um kind of Rings of Fate or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Someone yeah. where you had like the 
pot that had a shield that put around you or something like that? Or is that Crystal Bear? That was the original one. It was like all up to that one. The heck was that? The the original was the the one where the cup, because you couldn't get off the screen because, you know, there's no split screen. Yeah. Stay near the cup and some guy had to pick it up every time. Yeah. So he couldn't fight. Me and my friends beat that game. They remade that. Really? Not really, but almost. <laughs> There's a section of... Um, Aaron, what's the game where you're asleep and you're the guy? <laughs> it recently came out with a sequel this year. You know what I'm talking about. Metal Gear. Oh. Uh, the Evil photographer, within. Evil Within 2, has a section where you have to follow this person who's carrying a bubble of safety. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, Zelda has that too. One of the when you're getting on the elephant, I think. Which Zelda? The last one. It has a bubble of safety? I don't y- Yeah, remember you're you're maybe you're in the desert. You're in the desert, you're trying to get on the camel and lightning is striking you. Oh yeah. And there's that bubble. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So um I'm super excited for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'm still playing Xenox on my Wii U, but I, you know, I have to switch out the US uh, the HDMI thing. Mm-hmm. And I was telling Aaron the other day that or I guess you too, you're there Josh, but uh that I had on my TV two HDMI ports mm-hmm. and you can label them. Mm-hmm. And I bought a switch so I can plug in my PS3 like a switch uh, HDMI switch thing. A switcher. Switcher. So I, I I labeled it Switch. So I had a PS4 and then Switch because for some reason you couldn't plug the PS4 into the Switch switcher because it needs its own power source. Right. Very weird thing. So, but now I've removed the Switch er and I've plugged in a Switch. So now my Switch is for Switch and my PS4 is for PS4. There you go. So things are have aligned. Things are working out. Planets have aligned. My HDMI cores have aligned, and um. Did I talk about Wonderlust Adventures last week? Probably. Uh, I, I played a little so. bit of the, this. Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. So I just, I guess I just played Xenoblade. Um, yeah, I, I want a hundred percent that game, man. It's so good. I'm gonna miss my mech. I, I, I kind of have withdrawals to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. Even though I played it last night, yesterday. You've played it long enough that now it's at least Stockholm Syndrome. Yes. <laughs> You've been held hostage by that game for so long. You can't imagine life without yeah. it. Ooh, ooh, I, I um, updated uh, the Division. The Division has a patch 1.8, and it has a bunch of extra content. and Well, they're just a bunch of updates. And some of it includes a new area, the West Pier, uh, Rogue 2.0. So in the Dead Zone, the Dead Zone, not the Dead Zone, the Dark Zone, you go in there and you can... You know, now you instead of because what would happen is sometimes you get you would actually f- hit someone with a bullet and then you'd go rogue. But yeah. now they made it to where you, you have to flip a switch. So oh, you so can't you just accidentally go rogue. go rogue. Yeah, that's good. That's important. Yeah, because I was like shooting a guy and then some guy ran right in front of me. I'm like, whoa. And I'm all rogue. Oh, you could troll people that way. Oh, Jump yeah. In front of them. Yeah. To go and turn them rogue. I did. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, it's Mike's fault. Well, they, they, they did that. They've added um, some extra exotic things. Um, Dancers. Fix some sets. They now have loadouts. You can save loadouts, which is pretty cool because there's different sets and bonuses. And um, shooting from the hip has more of a penalty. And um, they've they've added hunters into the underground. Underground is the first expansion. Still haven't beaten it. I, it, beaten it in the sense that I haven't gotten all of the content in it and I haven't um, gotten max underground level and when you get these audio recordings um, they, they some of them talk about this alligator like there's this alligator living in the sewer and I want to run into this alligator I tried looking <laughs> it up online obviously there is no alligator so people say but what if I'm the one guy who <laughs> finds the alligator because these mm-hmm. are randomly generated it's my grand horizon uh-huh. Is is that alligator? It's like so. Bigfoot in GTA Three San Andreas. And yeah. Eventually, they found him. That's yeah. true. They well, did not not in three, but they they did a five thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I played a little of that. I had to refresh myself, or you know, like 
yeah, refresh with. You the, had to relearn. Relearn. Well, yeah. Re-point. I mean, it's like riding a bike because I play that game a lot. Killing people is like riding a bike. Yeah, just, man. Yeah. Once you do it once, it's just muscle memory. <laughs> Gets easier every time. Yep. You stop thinking about their families real yeah. quick. Um, they just become a statistic. I think that's it for me. I haven't played anything else. I don't think I'm going to play anything else the rest of this year. I'm going to probably be playing hardcore. Oh, I played some Rocket League. Yes, we did. We oh. played some Rocket League. Yes. On the Switch? Uh, no. 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 You can't uh, for. <laughs> no, I saw IGN re-reviewed it, and I thought that was kind of cool because the game's changed a lot. So I got in the mood to play it. And so I was like, Brandon, let's play Rocket League. And then we did. And it was really fun. It's been a long time since we played it. But yeah, that game is good times. They they do a great job with Rocket League. Keeping yes. it relevant. Yeah. Putting out things. Putting themselves out there. Like their advertisements, I'm sure, are paying off. They're the sponsors for WWE. And yeah. they're all over the Game Awards. Yeah, the game keeps uh, growing. Actually, it hasn't reached its peak in terms of users online at any given time and stuff. So, yeah. I like that because it's very much a sports type of game. It, they haven't done any league things for it, have they? Uh, you mean like... Like yeah, some sort like of an eSport? E-sport? Oh, yeah. Oh, big time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, Twitch hosts like 2v2 and 3v3, and those matches are crazy because mm-hmm. it's just people like on the ceiling the entire time and just like jumping from the ceiling and just hitting the balls in, in, into a goal, and it's, it's crazy stuff. Like... They rarely actually ever touch the ground. Yeah. Because it's just all rocket p- propelled and they're just yeah. always able to get like, they have the timing down on the respawns of the uh, the, the boost booster discs or yeah. orbs such that they just are constantly in the air. It. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I definitely plateaued in my skill level. Oh, yeah. 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 That ceiling. We lost a bunch, but... I thought we held our. It was always by like a point or something, you know. We never. Oh, there I was thought only we did one good. Game. Yeah, we did good. I just my skill level has has hasn't improved in a long while because. Well, it's been like a year since we played it. Well, yeah, but I just refuse to play a certain way. For example, there's a single jump and then boost. I just like to do the double jump and then boost. People will just boost and then fly in the air. I don't really. I'm not really a flyer. Mm. I uh, I would like to do that, but my aim is horrible, so I usually just fly right by the ball. I'm like, eh, good times. <laughs> then I'm out of the match. So, yeah, Rocket League. They added new music, too. It's all good. Yeah, it has yeah, music's always great. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the, the stuff they added is like really good, too. Mm-hmm. So. Bum, ba-dum. Bum, bum. That's, that's it for me. Yep. That was the gavel coming down on Brandon's stories. Yep. He's uh, found guilty. Yeah. Uh, Josh. Yeah. What's new in your life? Uh, wanted to play Breath of the Wild DLC, mm. which uh, was Surprise shadow dropped yeah. on at the Game Awards. Uh, but that night I was playing, while I was watching the Game Awards, I was playing uh, the new Hearthstone expansion, oh, okay. Kobolds and Catacombs. And then the next morning, I was like, okay, well, I'll play Zelda tomorrow morning. And I woke, woke up, up and yeah. I was like, I need to play something. What, was that? what did I need to play? Must have been must have been Hearthstone. So I went back and played <laughs> Hearthstone again. And then uh, this morning, I've continued to do so. Uh, that expansion is fun. They added cards, obviously, and new interactions and things, what, uh, as they always do. What number is this in, in expansions? Uh, I don't. Even, I couldn't even tell they you. They have Seven? a lot. They've, okay, wow. Yeah, and they're all free. No. Oh, they're not. Well, I mean, they could be. What do you mean by free? <laughs> you mean if you just... earn enough points, you could buy packs of cards, and if you did that long enough, you could theoretically open entire sets of cards. Um, that would take you more years than Hearthstone's been out, probably oh, okay. to do. So buying packs is pretty much the only way to really get the cards that you you can dust and really you could build decks like if you wanted to only have one deck that you were ever playing at a time you could do that at a certain point like right now i could probably dust all my cards which means deconstruct them down to like um just dust crafting materials crafting materials and then craft the deck that i want to play i could probably do that out of all the cards available to me um but yeah most 
that's not really the way you play that game. You buy packs. It's it's Magic the Gathering at this yeah. point. Um, but the new expansion, they brought out a new single player thing, and it's called the Dungeon Run. And um, you start with a, a deck of maybe uh, 15 cards, and you have 15 hit points, and you choose a hero. And then it's got another deck on top that it shows you the boss that you're going to fight. And like the first boss is something simple like a giant rat or something like that. And so it's got 10 health and it just has mostly rat minions that it plays and it has its own little power and things like that. And then you can beat it and then you get a treasure. And then that treasure is a a super powerful card that happens at the beginning of the game. And then uh, you choose, you start drafting at that point and you draft in groups of three. And they get added to your deck and you keep going for, I think it's 10 uh, bosses. You have a bunch of, it's like a, it's a dungeon run. You're in the dungeon, you're getting powers, you're finding uh, mm-hmm. equipment and making your deck better and things like that. And it is super fun. I have played that cool. exclusively since the, the new mm. expansion has come out. Wow. Blizzard makes a good product. It's just, it's just fun. And yeah. if I actually feel like I'm putting things on. Like uh, you get like a cloak of invisibility, and all of your minions have permanent stealth on them. Ooh. Yeah, even if you attack with them, they're still stealth. Ooh. That's cheating. A lot of them feel like cheating. <laughs> but that, that being said, I've only beaten the run maybe twice. Yeah, twice. Mm. And you get a little crown on your guys. It's hard to beat the runs, and you get a little crown on your guys when you do it. So, um, I think they were doing a promotion with it too. I don't remember. If it's open to everybody or just a select group of people, probably a select group of people. I'm not sure. Maybe everybody. Fifteen thousand dollars if you for the people person who beats with all the characters with the least amount of runs. So there's how many characters are there? Nine. Mm, yeah, it's one for each class, right? Right. Yeah. And so if you beat all ten runs with all nine characters in mm-hmm. one go you have a good chance of being in the running for $15,000. Whoa. Nice. Now, I don't know. I don't. I haven't looked up the details. I was only watching streamers. So I don't know if that's just like a select group of people or if that's just everybody. But either way, that's how hard it is to do that run. Hmm. It's good. It's fun. It's entertaining. And it's Hearthstone. So it's like you are just doing logic puzzles all yep. by your lonesome, which oh. is great. <laughs> I was about to say the way it was meant to be. Yeah. Even if if you don't want any action, you can just squelch the other person. You're like, no, I don't want to hear yep. you. <laughs> hear you say, well played, over and over and over and over. But like, I watch people, and they there's just interactions that are crazy. And t- knowing how to do that, it's I don't know. It's a level of sophistication is not the word I want, but understanding. Yeah. Um. Whenever I see a really good player. They're so smart with how they do things. Synergy. <laughs> There's a lot of synergy in the decks. So I kind of want to, I don't know, I want to do that. I can do that. I'm capable of that. So why don't I give it a shot? Mm. Oh. No. There we go, Mr. Comment. A voice What's from up? Mr. Aaron. Aaron's just Continue. thinking, what a nerd. Yeah. Thanks. Always judging it, uh, brother. Yep. But yeah, that's all I played. I still haven't played Breath of the Wild. I need to do that because mm. that looks good. Never heard of it. Yeah, what's this Breath <laughs> of the Wild? Uh, so I, I really played nothing. You know, just the one, an evening of uh, Rocket League uh, with Mister Becker here, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, just more Assassin's Creed Origins, which continues to be fantastic. I just solved a mystery involving. The mummies Sphinx. that were not oh. uh, properly embalmed, Uh-oh. and it was very, Uh-oh. it was a very cool little quest. And it went was it in. murder most foul? It, it was something. And uh, but speaking of the Sphinx, though, I uh, so I did make it to Giza in the, in the game where the pyramids are in the Sphinx, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and found the Sphinx. And I was uh, I was wondering if the game was to scale because the Sphinx was a lot smaller than I expected. Sphinx is not big. It's not that big. No, I I always, from the pictures, you know, because they always have it in front of the pyramids, I thought it was this huge structure. And, uh, yeah, actually, it was was funny because I saw it, and I was like, oh, this is 
is this how big it is? And then Bayak actually comments, oh, the Sphinx is a lot smaller than I expected. And I was like, oh, man, he's, we're in tune. It's, it's like a person and a half tall or something like that? It's, it's like two, two people. Two and a half Yeah, it's like tall. two. It's like, yeah. And uh, so it actually got me to go and research about the Sphinx. I was like, how accurate is this? And read all about it. And I was like, oh, it's actually pretty accurate. And uh, I was learned that uh, the thing I always believed, which was Napoleon's men shot the nose off, was not mm-hmm. true. No, nope. it's false. It's fake false. news. Lost fake news. It lost its nose like in the 1300s. It had a bad nose job. Yeah, it had a bad nose job. Mm-hmm. No, it was like in the 1300s when it lost its nose. But, uh, but yeah. And, Cut his uh, nose despite its face. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, I went... <laughs> <laughs> I went into the the pyramids and they're like kind of cool dungeons, and uh, yeah, just I'm. It, it made me very excited for when they release the uh, like the educational part of the game that they're gonna release, which is just the take a tour of Egypt and they have all the history behind everything, which mm-hmm. I think is something very cool that they're coming out with. Have they always like ha- hardcore gone to historical accuracy with the Assassin's games? Yes and no. Uh, like that was the other thing. Like in two, because that was during the uh, the Renaissance, Italian Renaissance, mm-hmm. and you know the the big bad guy in that was a pope, and I was like, oh, is this guy like how true is this to this guy? And so I actually researched him, and I was like, oh, this is actually there's a lot of truth that happened in this mm. and same with like the Merovingians and stuff like that. So, but they kind of like take some, you know, creative Obvious license because, yeah. you know, they tie it into the story of what's going on. So, you know, I don't think Cleopatra ever met a guy named Bayek, the last of the Magi and went on fun adventures with them, but we'll never know. We'll never know. Uh, Library of Alexandria burned down. We don't know. That's true. Yeah. that That's another place. Uh, that was really cool discovering that too. It made me sad that it burned down. But anyways, yeah, uh, still it's still great. Um, Mr. Aaron, what's, mm-hmm. what's new in your life? Um, really nothing new, but I did finish near Automata. And what is your final say? That game is incredible mm. i got a text out of nowhere one night where it was basically just omg mike ah, and just gibberish about how something amazing so you're saying that uh, i should probably avoid any story spoilers about the game that's much better if i discover it on my yeah own. there's a lot about this game where it, it is really effective to the player itself. So that's why I, you know, recommend just playing it and experiencing it yourself. The only thing you needed to know is how the structure of the endings work. Cause it confuses a lot of people that I read online where they say, well, they got ending a and they really like the game. And it's like completing ending a is literally like the prologue to the game. You start the game again later, and it picks up where it leaves off. And it's almost like you're playing the sequel to the game you just finished. Hmm. And so I think a lot of people will beat the game. And even if we, when you go through uh, the B route, uh, you're playing replaying through a lot of the story. And so you have to go through it twice to get to that next level, to get to the rest of the story. And now you know the rest of the story. Yeah, it's it. As soon as I'm done with Assassin's Creed, I'm going right back to it. So, because uh, I did enjoy what I played of it, and already had some kind of interesting revelations about the story that were very intriguing. It's just a bunch of stuff came out. I think that's when Josh was gave me permission to play Breath of the Wild, and I was like, "Oh, see you near." <laughs> you have my blessing. Yep, <laughs> he came down and he was like, "Oh, go, my son, play Zelda." Play Zelda, Aaron. You haven't played I'm Zelda. Glad I got through it. Yeah, did you play the DLC for Zelda? Uh, Not yet. Hmm. Hmm. I need to play near. I need to buy it. I need to play near too. 
Yeah. Since I like RPGs. We should, we should all play near. Uh, so, it took me 40 hours. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, it's short. It's longer than I expected. Because I, I heard it's <laughs> you can easily do it in like 20 Brandon or Brandon measures his games in lifetimes. Yeah. 40 hours. Too short. Yeah. This should be three lives. Three lifetimes. A game like Uncharted. It, did, it was... It was it was 40 hours doing um, almost all the side quests mm. okay. that I know of. Which is how you should play a game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Brandon thinks a game like Uncharted, which is a mere 18 hours, should be five bucks. Hardly worth his time. <laughs> no, no, I don't feel that way. <laughs> Maybe a long time ago. No, no, I, see. That's what no I, I think, you know, it's its value is, is in just you know it's level of escapism and just quality and and all that stuff so i don't i don't attribute it to work to hours except if it's an rpg i like it to be a certain length otherwise if it's shorter then i feel kind of cheated but i've only yeah i've been cheated in infinite on discovery i didn't feel cheated well, that's that's a, a great piece, game. Chrono Trigger is not super short. short. I, I beat it yeah, under thirty. Is. Yeah, it's like twenty twenty-five. Yeah, but to get all the endings, mm. yeah. But a lot of the endings become shortcuts, though. Like you can just kind of trick your way into them. They're less, but you still have to beat the game twelve times to do them. You know what? It's really not worth it to, unless you really want to like see it but i would say i would say chrono trigger you could beat the game with one of the normal endings and not have to go back but it's i don't know chrono trigger engenders such a loving relationship with all the characters that why would you ever go not go back why would you be like i'm done with this game now and be like oh i get to play some more all right. Let's and go. you know what? Um, Crown Trigger having a lot of endings like that, it does a lot better job than Nier does with its endings. Because the, the main endings that everyone, you know, says to experience are, they're all letter, numbered by, or I guess lettered by the letters of the alphabet, uh, A through Z. And then. A through E are the main story, and those are the ones you want to experience to get the full breadth of the game. And then all the other letters are just kind of like dumb, weird joke endings where you'll get like a block of text on the screen saying you did something really stupid or silly, and then you get fast forward ending credits. Yeah, I got one of those endings. <laughs> it felt good. So. Almost all of the other letters of the alphabet after E are like that as endings in in near. Mm. So that's one thing where it's like it has twenty six endings, but it really doesn't. That's five. That's five. Yeah. Five. And even the, even that is like, I would say this game really only has two endings. Mm. But what, Just because of the way it's structured. A and E or. No, it's I, I, you know, I won't get into it, okay. but okay, there's really like two ways it goes. Well, I'm I'm excited to get back to it, so um, but uh, so uh, I guess a prestigious award show happened for Again. video games, it's uh, getting there, it's getting there, it's it's, it's getting, getting there. It's, I mean, so it's the, this is uh, what the fourth year. Well, that depends on how you look at it, because uh, it, it it so this is the video game awards, and it did more or less spawn from the Spike VGAs, mm-hmm. which those were terrible. <laughs> yeah, those are those were some dark dark times back then when they would actually put cardboard cut out of people in the audience to make it seem like the auditorium <laughs> was more full. Um, I think Keeley counts it as the fourth VGA. Okay, uh, but. Yes, and and definitely the best one. I had no intention on watching it, but it just came up on uh, Twitch, and I was like, "Well, I guess I could just check this out and see, you know, how much of a train wreck it is." But then it actually ended up being really entertaining, and I really enjoyed it. And 
I felt like uh, the picks that they made were very good. Yeah. For the most part, uh, I was a little miffed that Horizon was nominated in just about every category and didn't win a single award. So it's, it is now known as Horizon Zero Awards. And, uh, but uh, I. I'm not going to begrudge the games that won because I felt like they were all like very worthy games to win. So I was I was happy to see Hellblade actually took get, down two. I think uh, three. Yeah. Oh. yeah, sound acting and uh, best uh, like indie debut or something. So uh, yeah, you already said that. Yeah. Oh, uh, it was um, sound games for impact or whatever. Games for, games impact. for impact. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So sound acting and, and games for impact and. Uh, uh yeah uh so Aaron uh, you watched it too uh before we get into kind of the bigger news that you know all the games that came out of what were your impressions of the show you know I always like watching this show even with the rough spots because it is it seems like Jeff Keeley is very earnest about his desire to improve the show and he takes feedback and you can tell he listens because the next year they always do something a little different. Advertisements were way better this year. Yes. Yeah. Because they weren't and, like stupid. They were like commercials. Yeah. Or like integrating and, YouTube or eBay for deals and stuff. The Bethesda one my, was awesome. My criticism this year is there was still um, not enough focus on a lot of the little awards. Yes. I I think it's kind of doing a disservice to just have someone stand up there and list off awards and winners without, you know, graphics or even showing the games that win these awards. I I know it, like uh Ed Boone, he went up there to actually give out an award and he's the creator of Mortal Kombat and Injustice. And as he's going up, he's being presented, they go, "Oh, and he, also, his game in Justice Two won Best Fighting Game of the Year, but he didn't have the opportunity to actually go up and receive the award. But instead, he's just giving somebody an award. And I was like, man, like in Justice Two, I felt like needed a spotlight. It was spotlight. injustice. It wasn't injustice. <laughs> and and Ed Boon's like such a celebrated figure in, in gaming history too that it would have been nice to see him get an award. Well, it's like the Academy Awards with like the technical awards that go on before the show. Yeah, and then they usually kind of reference them a little bit. Well, they could have done something like that with a pre-show yeah. this time. You're right. The pre-show could have had things. Uh, I think they're trying to avoid it becoming overly long. But Yeah, as it was, it was three and a half hours long. Right. But there's got to be like a balance in there somewhere. I still need to watch it. I haven't watched it yet. I want to watch it. it it's, it's pretty it, good. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, Breath of the Wild took it all. Uh, one game of the year. No surprises there. Game of the year. Uh, I honestly, I th- going into the show, I thought it was going to be either that or Mario Odyssey. Uh, but once it won best game direction, I was like, okay, yeah, it's it's going to win best best game. And so, and and I love the 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 two the the two uh, guys that uh, accepted the award. They were just so humbled, and you know, from <laughs> Nintendo, they were so. Like genuinely, like delighted and touched and humbled at this award that they received, and uh, I think that was another improvement because, like, I haven't watched the VGAs in, in a while, but like back in the Spike days, like everybody knew beforehand if they were winning an award or not. Yeah. And this year it was more like the Academy, where there was like people were genuinely surprised, and you could see like how happy they were and. It just it makes the awards seem more real instead of just like a by the numbers like yeah here you go and <laughs> you already kind of know and you have your acceptance speech accepted or ready. And, but yeah, uh, continue to look forward to that show for next year. Uh, but I guess the the bigger news that came out is all the announcements. And that's another reason. I probably the main reason a lot of people tune into the show. Yeah, is that mm-hmm. Jeff Keighley tries to you know make an effort to show off new trailers and things like that. And quite a few of them, like surprising announcements, like Bayonetta three. That's a mm-hmm. game that I never expected to ever see to get a third one. To get a third one, yeah. But I, and you know what? It's because I, I think it was impactful in the Wii U, even though the Wii U itself was not successful as overall. Mm-hmm. And I think. 
maybe the, their thought process is if we dump, if we not dump, but if we put money into a Bayonetta 3 on a console that so far is successful, is that more of like a contributing factor for more third party involvement? Is that another thing that we could show to say, hey, look, look at what we're doing. We're doing a good job. Yeah, it's uh, it's probably also like the Bayonetta games are probably not super expensive to make too. So they're probably really smart about like how much money they can invest on what they know they can get returned for. Mm. So they probably just looked at that and were like, ah. But and they're also coming out with the HD remasters of Bayonetta 1 and 2 for the Switch as well. Right. Uh, I wouldn't say remasters. I'm I sure mean, there's they're, ports. Oh, they're, they're just they're ports H- of the Wii U versions. Okay. okay. Which one amazing. I mean, those are great games great looking games for even the wii u hardware and the switch is going to do it even better the switch has that advantage where they could just release every wii u game and be like look it's portable yeah. now you know, except yeah. mm-hmm. xenoblade chronicles x they could they could they would have they to could. redo but it, it utilizes the tablet so much it's, nah, nah, it's a could. nintendo published game so they'd fix it, it. They'd fix it so you didn't have to use it. Would I play it? Probably. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, uh, well, uh, I just, I want to get to the trailer that that excited and confused me the most, which is uh, Death Stranding. Soul Calibur (laughs) 6. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, that one surprised me. But uh, no, Death Stranding, uh, which Mm -hmm. is Hideo Kojima's newest newest game. Uh, What the heck? I don't know what I saw, but it, what you, it was was awesome. You know, this trailer is the first one that makes me actually feel like this will be a real game. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, because it's because before it was, what is this game? And now it is, this game is a um, sci-fi horror experience at the very least yeah I think so that's we have a baseline say. now sort of it, that's fair to say it's a sci-fi uh, body horror <laughs> can we put little. body in there <laughs> there's a lot of well, crazy, maybe yeah. there's stuff involving the body and yeah. stuff being and, in the body that shouldn't be in there and the aliens question mark that are in there are very stranger things yeah they are a little bit but they're very uh, uh, impressive, like just in their their impact, I guess, in seeing them, and then very creepy mm-hmm. for sure. Just the way it's handprints instead of footprints that follow them around, and they got hands for feet. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. And uh, but like the the premise is just so interesting. So is it going to be like a stealth game? Do you think, or is it, it, it's hard to say. It's what reality is to people that do drugs. That's what that could be. Could be. <laughs> and then just at one, so out there. Yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, and then at one point, uh, there's a baby inside Norman Reedus's throat. It, it <laughs> looks like you know, it's it's has to do with human survival. So survival of the human race, probably. Yeah. Um. There there is a baby, and they're protecting it, and it looks like there is a benevolent evil evil i should say not benevolent but just a malevolent force out to eradicate them and it is supernatural Mm. spiritual metaphysical and and you know it involves them not breathing in order to not be noticed so it's an interdimensional yeah, thing. interdimensional is probably my, your best bet, right? You you know, um, there's something about the water that I noticed about how you know sometimes they're in water because it looks like they're on like the bottom of a seabed or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and uh, well, it has to do with creation too because it's they talk about the the Big Bang and, and yeah. like subsequent well, subsequent bangs. So, so when they're there and the water starts to rise, it's like that black water. Yeah. And then it, it'll cut to later them being in just a body of water, but everything's all weird. Um, and it's then I also noticed that they have that canister that contains, 
I guess, the uh, that baby, where they flip a switch and it turns from black into translucent, and you can see the baby inside. Yeah. So there might be some kind of thing there between this clear water and a black water. I wonder if there's going to be a mechanic where you have to like hold your breath and you have like a breath meter. So because the enemies, me. you know, seem to find them by, by their breathing. Mm-hmm. So you have to manage your, your breath. Otherwise you get caught by the enemies. I think the breathing is part of, uh, if you stop breathing, then like, I think no it sound. makes zero sound. Mm. Could be a sound thing. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to say. But then it had that thing on its shoulder that was going. And it, it and would it, only do that if you were holding the canister with the baby. Yeah. Oh. Because okay. the guy put it down and then uh, Norman Reedus' character picks it up and then his starts going up. Yeah. It's pretty clear that that's what detects the things. But yeah, you're right. It makes noise. But I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's not human noise. Uh-huh. I'm uh, I all I know is is that I'm really happy that no one says no to Kojima, and they, <laughs> because I just want that guy just to be completely untethered and just give us the weirdest stuff that his imagination can give us, and that seems what mm. Death Stranding is delivering in spades so far. Because that was always kind of like the my favorite parts of Metal Gear is like when it gets weird, <laughs> <laughs> like the fire whale. Yeah, well, Metal Gear Solid yeah. Five had a lot of weird moments, but uh, like yeah, you know, two, was... you know, two gets really weird, like uh, you know, with the Colonel towards the end and all that stuff, and then the radar. Two, the four, radar and five are all. super weird games. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, no release date, but uh, something to look okay. forward to. Can't yeah, imagine you, you there's just, gonna be a release date for a while. Uh, yeah, just he can take all the time he wants because I just. Let the master do his work. Uh, so, uh, so I'll just open up to you guys. Is there was there another trailer that uh, stood out that excited you or surprised you? You know, um, one game that they showed off uh, got put back on my radar that I was really excited about. And going back and watching a lot of development diary things on YouTube and things like that. Uh, got me extremely excited and I can't wait to play this game and that's dreams Mm. on the ps4 yeah that trailer kind of showed a little bit of what it actually is yeah but if you go on youtube and look at media molecules channel they do streams where they actually play the game Mm. and create stuff and the creation tools in this game are insane and they are more intuitive than anything ever in little big planet and it's incredible how easy it is to make something that is really interesting and functional very quickly in that game it seems like they give you a lot of tools to create a lot of different genres too. Cause I saw like a space shooter was in there and like side scroll. Yeah. It, it lets you, it gives you a lot of freedom on, you know, what you can do, uh, you know, cause you're creating like experiences basically for this game and you can move from, you know, one experience to the next experience and really, uh, it's only limited by what you can come up with and using the tools to, to create it. But uh, you can even just spend time using the creation tool, creating shapes, uh, adding onto those shapes, deleting from those shapes, and sculpting things that you can just place in a world. And then you can put that up and have that available for people to download and add into their own hmm. worlds or own experiences, uh, their dreams that they're creating. And then there's also a really robust music creator. It's almost like uh, an actual, uh, you know, commercial software. Wow. Like it's on that level almost Wow. of music creation that you can put up, use music to, for your own thing, or just put up to be available for everyone to use I think so. and edit them themselves. 
yeah, I think some pretty special stuff is probably going to come out of that. Yeah, I encourage everyone if they're like interested at all in like, you know, joy of creation and like even mm-hmm. just making stuff in the game looks fun. And if that's interesting to you, check out Mini Molecules' uh, YouTube channel and all their videos on dreams. What I remember when I first encountered Little Big Planet, I had literally woken up on a day off. Actually, I was unemployed at the time. And <laughs> That's a long day. Off. I started creating a level, and I didn't stop until at night. I I <laughs> played. I think the most, you know, of anything in one sitting that I ever have. Just in creating a level, I had so much fun. I'll tell you right now. If when this game comes out, I will pick this up and just stream me sitting there and creating stuff. Because I can see myself spending a whole day just mm-hmm. making things and you know putting it out there. Does the the switch doesn't have streaming? Does it? No. Okay. Not by default. You have to use yeah, like a capture default. card. Oh, okay. Capture cards aren't that expensive though. That's really not bad. Uh, one of the like. It wasn't a trailer, but it was an ad that I thought was was pretty good. Was Bethesda had a save single player campaign yeah. where it was like showing all these happy people playing uh, online games, and then there was all these uh, these sad, lonely single player people that were off in the corner looking sad. <laughs> That's me. And and uh, it was um, Linda Blair, right? Was the uh, no, Linda Carter. Linda Carter, sorry. Linda, Linda Car- Blair from, from The Exorcist. Yeah, The Exorcist. I think it was <laughs> Linda in there. Uh, Linda Carter, she she was uh, she was kind of the person. It was almost like a adopt a homeless animal kind of ad, but uh, it 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 was kind of uh, sad to see something like that because like single player games are becoming kind of a rarer thing, and it's like I know that the whole thing was in you know tongue in cheek. But it, I was kind of like, oh, Bethesda is kind of one of the few companies right now that's just making dedicated single player games, and none of them are selling well, which is why that, this that, is. <laughs> yeah, that was the biggest thing that I took away from it was seeing them show off all this stuff and having that realization where it's like, you know what, Bethesda really does make a lot of really great games. Yeah, yeah they make games, but I mean, I don't think single players are really dying. I mean, you can look back and there's mm-hmm. just there's there's so many more single player games than there are multiplayer games I, if, I, well it's, it's more that the trend is shifting yeah mm-hmm. and a... there are more triple a games that are multiplayer focused than there are no, i mean not more of them but there are more now than ever triple a games that focus on multiplayer but i mean the ad was mostly just a stab at ea because ea shuttered visceral over their single player star wars game and they you know clumsily whether they meant to or not basically said oh well the game was shaping up to be a single player game so we canned it so that we could make a game where players could continuously interact with it and get involved with it and stuff for years to come and well i think it was the uh, main thing was that they said like oh this is what players want is yeah. online multiplayer experiences and a non-linear hmm. so you can argue that they were saying that you know having open world games like Assassin's Creed and uh, Skyrim doesn't really count into what they were saying. No. But uh, I think that's a feeling that a lot of people are having is that they don't want these games to go away, so they reacted to it. Yeah. But they offered all a lot of their games 50% off and they showed all the games and I was like, oh, I kind of I own like almost all of these. <laughs> so this sale does nothing but then it also was just like kind of a testament of the quality of their publishing in the last couple of years uh because man they've put out some real good stuff doom is um, awesome we did mention this but uh the soul caliber 6 trailer i was excited to see that get announced and then also excited to see that it doesn't look like crap <laughs> Yes. Happy it doesn't look like garbage. I really like that series. Uh, Aaron and I have, we get into the character creation and we oh, make yeah. some pretty funny characters. So I hope it comes back. I 
It's got to. I oh man, I'd be sick. And if uh, but if they lock that stuff behind loot boxes, I'll be real mad. I'll be really <laughs> really sad if, because like I had an awesome Superman in in five. Like he looked <laughs> perfect, and uh, even had the laser eyes and everything. So but, laser eyes. Uh, but yeah, Soul Calibur six does look cool. Um, is there any other things that kind of stood out about the uh, VGA? Still need to watch it. I mean, like announcement-wise or anything? Is there anything else to cover? <clears throat> Speaker for ever. Hold your peace. Okay. Uh, so uh, I guess that will conclude our VGA. Uh, I guess our game, our own Game of the Year podcast should be coming up somewhere in the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Next few weeks we should get together. Stay tuned. And uh, you're going to want to listen on its air date because the moment we announce our lists, those specific games will be hard to find. Because <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah, that's what happens what every year. Sales. We, we announce them and people just rip them off the shelves. And we do our best because we, we let retailers know ahead of time. Yeah. EA right now has got their fingers crossed that I'm going to name Battlefront 2 because it sold so badly mm. its first month. Well, all those console bundles too. They got to sell all those Battlefront yeah. 2 console bundles. Yep. Yeah. And this is just for me. I, I don't speak for anybody else here, but uh, video game companies, I'm open for kickbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor Josh. He's poor. <laughs> Super poor. I'm the poorest one here. <laughs> uh, and so as a uh, poor person, tell us where they can find us. GameRushmore.com. <laughs> dot on Southern, oh, wait. GameRushmore. <laughs> dot on Southern Road dot com for our podcast. At GameRushmore on Twitter. Uh, Facebook. We are on Southern Road. You can find us there. And GameRushmore at gmail.com. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel. YouTube.com forward slash on Southern Road to see uh, the episodes on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, from there, you can see Laser Ramon as a related channel where Aaron has some reviews and walkthroughs. It's a very good channel. I am thinking about possibly streaming the Zelda DLC during the day next week sometime. Mm -hmm. And maybe some other stuff. We'll see. Keep your eyes peeled. Uh, you can probably announce that on the onset of the road thing the day you do it or whatever. You'll say, join me. Or our, on Twitter, where Aaron is at Laser Ramon? At Laser Ramon. Aha. At Laser Ramon. Yeah, da, da, da. All right, handy listeners such as you are. Peace out. Peace be with you. <laughs>